Our next model, or our next approach to valuing a company, is called the earnings-based model. Okay, so this what basically this uses PE ratios, which again is probably something you've come across before. Now we use this as an approach for valuing controlling interests. So again, unlike the dividend valuation model, this is a valuation if you are planning on buying more than 50% of the shares in the company. This gives you an idea of how much those shares would be worth. The PE ratio is something that investors use. It's kind of a key investor ratio that shows you how much investor confidence there is in the company. So our PE ratio is the market price or the, the market value of the company on the stock exchange divided by its earnings. So they get this kind of PE multiple. So how many times the current level of earnings you're willing to pay to buy the share. Now, again, if you are an unlisted company and you want to kind of value yourself or somebody's trying to value you, what they would do is they would find a similar company to you that is listed, take its PE ratio and use that as a way of, of figuring out your market value. So if we find an appropriate PE company for a, for a company PE for a company similar to ours, you just rearrange the formula. So the market price of our unlisted company is the PE ratio of the similar listed company multiplied by our earnings. So you just apply their PE ratio to our earnings to get a market value for our business. Now, like I said, this would be used for controlling interests because the idea is that if we control the business, we control the company and what it does with all of its earnings. So we value its earnings as a whole okay, to try and figure out how much the company is worth to us. Now, we've said earnings a few times here, just to nail it down, earnings from our point of view will be the company's profit after tax, less any preference dividends. Because again, those preference dividends are going to go to preference shareholders, and we're looking at buying ordinary shares. So the preference shares kind of sit outside that. So we've got to take those preference dividends off to find the, the earnings that we're going to be able to use if we buy the company. So, for example, um, let's let's do an example together, a nice one. Um, P is a small company that operates in the car component industry. Your client is considering buying the company. P currently has earnings of £125,000. Similar listed companies in the car component industry have an average P of 12, but individual values range between 2 and 18. Value P using a P ratio and explain any reservations you might have about the result. So hopefully quite a nice straightforward one. Okay, So all we're going to do, if we're P and this little unlisted company, what we'd normally do is we'd take our earnings figure, which we've got as £125,000, and we'd multiply that by the, the average PE ratio for a similar listed company, just to get a feel. So in this case, P's value would actually come out at £1.5 million because we're using that nice average figure to get an average valuation. But of course, that is actually quite misleading, because as it mentioned, the PE ratio for similar companies actually ranged quite widely. So if we were more like a company that had a PE ratio of two, then our company would only be worth a quarter of a million pounds. And if we were at the top end, so if we were similar to a company that had a PE multiple of 18 on the open market, then we'd be worth two and a quarter million. So while we often use an average figure, in reality, it's not always very clear kind of where we are within the range of PE ratios that we should be using. There are other problems with this sort of technique. So as well as, as not kind of being too sure about whether we should use the average or, or one of, of kind of many different figures for the PE ratio, um, just look at our earnings as well. We've assumed that we're making £125,000. Part of this calculation assumes that we're going to be making those earnings pretty much forever. Okay. Now, are, are, is that realistic? Are we going to keep making £125,000? Are they our typical level of earnings? It could be that there are one-off events that are either artificially pushing our earnings up or down this year. Um, and if that's the case, then if this £125,000 isn't representative of our normal earnings, we're going to get a very misleading result. Okay. But ultimately, we need to be aware of how good a fit it is. Just like we said before, for our last method, if we are taking 
information about similar listed companies and applying it to our business, how similar are we? Is that company really similar to ours? So is it fair to take a listed company's figure of PE and apply it to ours as a multiple? Okay, unless our company and theirs are basically identically the same, oh, you're not really gonna get a good picture of how much your company is worth. And finally, don't forget, there will also be a non-marketability discount here as well. Okay, so if we're using a listed company's PE ratio, we then have to look at the valuation that gives us as an unlisted company like P, and we probably have to knock you know, up to a quarter of that value off um, in order to get a real valuation for us if we are not on the stock exchange. Now, it's worth noting that some acquisitions will involve the two businesses actually enjoying synergies with each other. So if we go out and try and buy another company, as we saw before when we were talking about kind of Morrisons and the co-op, once the two companies merge together, so after we've acquired the company, we may enjoy extra synergies that will give a boost to our overall value. If you get a situation where there are synergies between us as the acquiring company and our target company, the very important rule that you have to follow is that the maximum that we will pay for the target company is our market value. So the market value of the acquiring company after we buy the target minus the market value of the acquiring company before they buy the target. In other words, from the acquiring company's point of view, you would never pay more for the target then the target's acquisition will increase your own value by. Otherwise, you're essentially wasting shareholder money. It might be easier to show you this with an example. Um, so what I'd like you to do is grab your examples sheet and have a look at example two, which is called Tenant PLC. Again, take a minute and have a read through. Press pause while you're doing it. When you've finished having a read, press play and we'll go through it together. So if we have a look at example two, this tenant PLC, we can see that there are clear synergies between the two organizations. So it mentions the fact, for example, that tenant believes it will enjoy synergies of £10,000 a year as a result of the acquisition. And it's talking about these kind of PE ratios, this earnings based model. So we want to work out what the maximum, first of all, that tenant would pay for who. So remember that rule we just mentioned before. First thing we need to do is work out the acquiring company's market value before the acquisition. Now that's relatively straightforward using PE ratios. Tenant, the acquiring company, currently has earnings of £250,000 and it's got a PE ratio of 7. So if you multiply those two together, we're talking about having a market value of £1 million £750,000. What we then want to do is compare that to the value of tenant after it acquires who. So assuming that you kind of merge these companies together through acquisition, what would the new company be worth? Well, of course, the new company would have much higher earnings, first of all. So we'd have tenant earnings of £250,000, if it acquires who, it would have whose earnings of £50,000 to add into that. So it would have kind of combined earnings of the two companies working together of about £300,000. But on top of that, it's going to get an extra synergy saving of £10,000 a year. So in actual fact, the merged company is going to get that little extra boost and its earnings are now going to be £310,000 per annum. We're told that the market will apply a P ratio of 8 to the combined entity. So shareholders will be willing to pay 8 times its level of earnings. So that would give us a value of the kind of final merged company after the acquisition of £2,480,000. So if tenant proceeds with the purchase, the purchase will actually increase the market value of tenant by £730,000. So the, the market value of, of tenant will go from 1.75 million to 2.48 million, the difference between those first two figures. So that is the maximum that tenant would consider paying. 
Okay, because that's the value of the acquisition. If you think about what um, who would actually accept, what the shareholders of who would accept, well, the current market value of who, it earns £50,000 a year and has a P ratio of 10. So essentially, its current market value is half a million pounds. So that is the minimum that who would be likely to accept. Why, why accept less than your current market value? So if that's the least that they would accept, and the most that who would actually pay is 730, then ultimately you can say the final sale price is going to be somewhere between the two, depending on who's got the stronger negotiating power. And that is your earnings-based model, your P-E ratio. So it's, it's a good model, but again, it does have all those criticisms we talked about before. It's really based on lots of estimates, and you've got these big problems of having to take listed company information and try and apply it to your business.